The main reason why I have never used a headset mirror window like this one in VUI setups is that it's just not something that you want to look at. Uh, here we are simply mirroring the output from one of the eyes, here the right eye that is rendered to the headset into a window on the screen by just you know, pasting the render texture into a window. And that is just pretty terrible to look at. It shakes all over the place, it's very confusing, uh, it's just really, really tough. Um, but now that VUI has a standalone compositor, we can mess with the way we are doing this without really paying any additional cost. So here's the extreme way of going about it. Instead of just pasting the rendered view into a window as a 2D image, I'm drawing it as a 3D rectangle into another virtual camera using the headset's current rotation. This will cancel out any rotation of the headset, which I'm moving around rather wildly while filming this, and lead to a beautifully stable view. The downside of this approach is that if the changing view direction of the headset is too different from the fixed view direction of the virtual camera, you get huge black areas in the final view where we don't have any source imagery to show. And it can even lead to a completely black screen if the headset is looking the opposite way. So this is not entirely practical, which is why we are going to fix this. In this display mode, I am setting the azimuth angle of the virtual camera, meaning its rotation around a vertical axis, exactly to the azimuth direction of the headset at the time the image is rendered. So this means that we are still ignoring any changes in elevation, meaning the viewer looking up or down, and we are ignoring any changes in, uh, in the roll angle, meaning the viewer tilting the head left or right, but we are following the viewer as they are looking around in the horizontal plane. Uh, which is actually a really good intermediate result. We are still getting black areas at the top of the screen when the viewer is looking down and we don't have any imagery at the top, and we are getting in black bars at the bottom if the viewer is looking up for the exactly same reason. But other than that, uh, the image is still much more comfortable to look at because the horizon is completely stable and we're at the same time able to see what the viewer in the headset is actually looking at. So this would be a first practically useful compromise. In this final display mode, I'm setting both the azimuth angle and the elevation angle of the virtual camera to that of the headset, meaning we're only ignoring the roll angle. The result of that is that now whatever the user in the headset is looking at shows up precisely in the center of the window so we can exactly see what they're seeing. Yet at the same time, the horizon is still stable from left to right, so I think it is still a much more comfortable way to look at the video feed from the headset than just pasting the image into the window. The other thing I did here is that I significantly increased the field of view of the virtual camera so that we can see the black bars around the rendered image as I am rotating the headset around. If I had used the same field of view as in the other parts of the video, you barely wouldn't have seen any of the black bars at all, which is why I did it here. In conclusion, the nice thing about having a separate compositor in VUI is that all of these little hacks that I've showed so far came essentially for free. Um, because whether you take a rendered image and paste it into a window as an image or you draw it as a 3D rectangle with a texture in a virtual camera has completely negligible impact on performance. It makes no difference whatsoever. The other nice thing is that doing all these different display modes took like nine additional lines of code uh, in VUI uh, to make that happen. So that's nice. And this is already eminently usable the way it is. It might actually mean that I will use uh, headset, ren uh, headset mirroring uh, as a way of, of showing what the viewer in the headset is seeing in VUI because the way I normally do it by having a secondary window with a third person camera just incurs additional rendering overhead and this does not. Um, in terms of future work, what we can now obviously do is instead of just blindly taking the rotation values reported by the headset, we can run smoothing algorithms of varying aggressiveness on them so that we can have the virtual camera not directly following where the viewer is looking, but we can have it follow with a delay or we can have it follow with a low pass filter um, in order to still follow the viewer around, but get rid of all the jerkiness and, and shakiness and what have you in the head transition. That would be super easy to implement. I simply haven't gotten around to that. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.